Aloha, everybody. Kolo here from the Warrior Women in the World of Entrepreneurship podcast. I'm your host, and today is going to be another great episode with another wonderful warrior woman in the world of entrepreneurship. So I hope that you guys enjoy the show. Please don't forget to check out Anchor Fitness. They have an incredible cable machine that you can bring anywhere. I use it all the time with my clients here at Tasco Fit Martial Arts and Fitness, and also with the Hawaii Hurling team to help build that strength for sport-specific motions. So you can use our code with them uh, when you're going to check out, and that's going to be Tasco Fit 11. So definitely check that out. It's going to change the game for you, your clients, and if you have a small gym to use that. So enjoy the show, guys, and I hope to hear from you soon. everybody and welcome to another episode of Warrior Women in the World of Entrepreneurship podcast. Today's Warrior Woman guest I know very well from playing uh, Kamogi and Hurling with her over the last eight years now is Miss Jane McCoy. Uh, so Jane is an executive director of antitrust, privacy and cyber uh, security law and that's at Morgan Stanley. She was a senior associate of international law firm at Davis Polk and uh, Ward, if I'm like screwing up these names you guys know it as You're Wardwell good. LLP. <laughs> Um, where she specialized in antitrust law for over eight years. So eight's that magic number apparently today. <laughs> um, so she's an Armand native in Ireland, and for those that don't know where that is. And Jane also studied law with French law at University College Dublin, a master's of law at Cambridge University, and is now studying on executive MBA with Quantic School of Business and Technology. So um, Jane is also the founder and CEO of Women with Ambitions. So that's kind of even still a relatively uh, new and growing uh, venture for her, and that provides a space for Irish and Irish American women working in New York to connect more deeply, uh, to form a meaningful network, and just take some time to focus on just intentional self development, which she's going to tell us more about here. So, Jane is also the founder and chairperson of the Liberty Gales Camogie Club for New York, New Jersey. That's where I uh, learned to play even more and got, you know, my start there with you guys. So, that was established about 10 years ago now. And it was the first adult camogie club in New York after uh, an absence of about 20 years. So that's a big, big accomplishment. And the club has since become uh, four-time North American senior champions. And then uh, Jane was also recently, which is awesome, Jane was also honored with the Irish Echo Community Champion Award in 2022. So she now lives in Hoboken with her husband, Michael, and puppy, uh, Jim McGinnis, and is always looking for lady golfers to play with. So she'll also talk about that a little bit more. So Jane, thank you so, so much for being here today. I can't wait for this conversation. Thank you so much, Kolo. This is so exciting. Um, and I'm so proud of you and all that you've accomplished. So I'm, I hope we can talk about that as well. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Like I said, we're here to, this is just a conversation to help all those other women entrepreneurs out there or anybody. It doesn't even have to be women entrepreneurs. Like you guys are listening in. Hopefully anything that we talk about today is going to be able to help you on your journey. If you're already in progress or if you're thinking about starting it, just, just fucking start it. <laughs> so Jane, tell us how you started all. Like, where did you, where did your entrepreneurship like start with, was that with the Liberty Guilds? Was that like your first thing that you had founded or did you have like a background in it back in Ireland or here? So tell us that story. You know, it's funny. I feel like I've only even really thought and reflected on this recently. Um, I mean, from the Liberty Gales, I suppose, is the first sort of big thing that like I took on because, you know, I was at university and then I kept moving places and living places. But I think that what ingrained it in me was always this need to be a leader, I would say, but around a community. So like creating and building a community. Now, obviously, like having lived in New York now 10 years in October, I had more time to do that. Mm. Um, yeah. But that's I think it's kind of I've reflected on that recently. So I, I suppose I never would have thought that I was entrepreneurial until now you kind of reflect. I'm like, okay, like this is a, a trend where, but I think that that trend is based on my just desire to always sort of have a community. Like even when I was at school and things, and again, you know, it's when you, you think back to this, my sort of nickname used to be The Link because I would like gather all the friends and organize us to do something. But like that was just, you know, being going out or just like whatever it might have been. And I sort of think that sort of carried through like even university, you know, organizing balls or like 
um, like I was the class president and things like this, you know. But as I say, because I was more transient, I just kind of thought, well, like I always like to be a leader. I think it's it's honestly a lot of it is I just like to get stuff done. You know, yeah. if, like I have a goal in mind. I'm like, if we're going to say we're going to go to a concert, OK, we should book the tickets like now. Because, you know, like things can you just kind of like time moves on and it gets forgotten about. So I think a lot of it's because of wanting to just take action and do things. Um, so yeah, so the Liberty Gales would have been the first sort of big venture that I took on and you so really saw it sort of blossom. And now with Women with Ambition, we just actually had our first sort of one year anniversary there this week oh on the 8th of February, which is crazy. And you know, honestly, like when you see the development of that, like our one year anniversary, what was day one? It was sitting at this table, drinking tea and eating biscuits, you know? So. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we can talk about like what we do now and things, but yeah, so I think that, yeah, Liberty Gales was definitely the first sort of tangible, intangible, whatever we want to call it thing that you can really see develop. But I suppose I always sort of had that in the background. It was a quality that maybe I just really, you know, tried to get my teeth stuck into, but luckily I found a space and a place where I could. Absolutely. So like you said, Liberty Gales was your first bigger one. How did you even figure out? like what it was is a non for profit like all of those things like where did you there's information out there obviously but like there's so much information like and all of those very legal details are sometimes very hard to understand like which one you need to go with and then of course you try one and then it's like oh uh, actually you should have done this one and then you've spent money that you really didn't need to so how yeah. did you know how to do it like did you reach out to people did you just look you know look it up like Tell us kind of just the yeah. meat and potatoes, as people I say. Mean, yeah, no, I mean, so with the, for people that don't know, like Liberty Gales, it's it's a charity. It's a 501c3. It was never going to be a business. It, that's mm -hmm. just not what it is. It's a cultural club, like for sports and heritage and development, that sort of culture. So I guess the question was, do you make it an official 501c3 or do you not? Now, at the start, in like the first year or two, I would say it was totally unofficial. It was like just trying to gather up people, let them know that it was here. And even though like it was a lot of Irish people, of course, like you know, a lot of them hadn't played. Or they were like, oh, I haven't played that since I was 13. So it was really trying to just keep them and re reel them in. And then you're trying to establish a framework that you actually have teams to play or places to go where you can have, because then what are you training for, you know? Like you can yeah. only do things for so, so long, but you want to be able to have like a goal that you can go and play. So that was definitely the first year or two, like the focus on the recruitment and stuff. But then, yeah, the question is like, do you formalize it? And you know, a lot of that is, you know, for longevity, I think that it's a good idea. How did I find out about it? Honestly, I probably, I would have asked around different clubs. Luckily, I'm a lawyer, so I know how to research that sort of stuff. Um, but then just, yeah, just following the instructions, like got our bylaws, got a board set up. A board is useful for that reason, to formalize it, but a board's useful because you need the help, right? It does, like, take an army. So, yeah, um, yeah so it definitely would have been a lot of Googling around. And I do think I would have contacted some of the other clubs out here. Like, I was involved with the Manhattan Gales, sussing it out from them as well. So, yeah, luckily, you know, there's definitely a lot of people that know things. Also, like, there's a tax man then that would help us, and he, like, kind of guided you in the way. So, and similarly, we're doing the same now for Women with Ambition. Luckily, it's easier because again, kind of know what to do, but it's it's great because then it's good for getting sponsorship. You can then give them your tax certificate and they can give you sponsorship and write it off for them. And then they're happy to support you, but it's also great for their tax. So that's really helpful because with the fact that it is a charity and it's all non-for-profit, we need funds from somewhere right. <laughs> to do all the different initiatives and programs that you want to do. You know, you want to take these girls to go and play here, or there, everywhere. Like, you know, you've been to the North Americans many times. Mm -hmm. Same now with women, women with ambition. Like, we want to get speakers in. We want to be able to pay these speakers. We want to be able to run programs. So, like, we charge people for our events and things. But then, like, we're working on sponsorship now. And I'm excited because we have our first two sponsors for an event that we're having for International Women's Day. And I'm so excited because that's, like, our first like a government sponsor and also a corporate sponsor. It just adds legitimacy to the whole venture. But then it really, like, the funds are being used for such good purpose, you know? So Yeah. Yeah. So is your uh, Women With Ambition, is that also a... 501. So it's in the process. It's in the process, but that's what it ultimately will be. It honestly takes longer than it probably should. It's quite annoying, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's in that, and that's what it will ultimately become again because the tax advantages for our sponsors and things. Like you know, we don't. None of us that are doing it get paid. Luckily, we're doing it out of passion. <laughs> right. So yeah, um, that's obviously the one difficulty with the non-for-profit stuff. 
Um, mm. Obviously, if you could do these things as your livelihood, it would be amazing. But yeah, um, but yeah, so it will ultimately be a five a five one c three as well. So, what do you found of so going? I guess back to recruiting for either or not so much recruiting for women with ambition, but just trying to reach out, right? Like what's been the best methods that you've found that have worked? Like, like you said, talking to other people, but even that, like, okay, how do yeah. you find that? Are you just going out to whatever bars or like events that they're going to, or, yeah. you know, do you reach out? Obviously we have social media and email and all of these things, all of these things mm-hmm. you've been, like you said, you're the link. So do you just like shoot out like a ton of emails or end call or like what's been your, most successful way of doing that is there just one or do you use them like a multiple array of yeah, things probably a bit of everything like if i think back to the komogi days when we were first recruiting luckily i was playing football as well right mm. so the girls that i was playing football with were very receptive even, and a lot of them were like i'm not playing that like i don't know how to play that and i was like just come just come and then they yeah. like they just had such a good time so then they would a lot of it was it would have been word of mouth at the start um Honestly, I am known as being like a really good pesterer. Like I will hound people and I will <laughs> follow up and I will follow up and I just don't really care. And like mm. no one ever tells me to like piss off. So that's worked out. But yeah. um, but I like will be like following up and okay, make sure that like, if they need to get lift sorted or, or you know, they, they need to know, get the instructions, like the transport, like I will text them that and follow up and be like, you're on the way. And you know, that takes a lot of remembering, but I think that that's just another sort of quality I have, like this strange ability to like remember random facts about people and stuff. So I think it's it's honestly just about nurturing relationships because like mm. they're coming into an environment where they're not used to, whether they've played Komogi or not. And a lot of the time it was they wouldn't. So like you're coming to something that's so foreign to you. You don't know who's going to be there, what it's going to look like. As long as they know they have someone who's kind of looking out for them, I think that that's honestly half the battle getting them there. So that would have been a lot of it at the start. Even now, sometimes I'm still pestering people. To, but luckily now, you know, people want to play Komogi and like definitely all these different groups of friends. Um, but at the start, like, so for you, and I hope we talk about the Hawaii hurling and how it's going, you know, it is going to be a lot of that. And it's yeah. exhausting. There's no doubt about it. It is draining <laughs> at the time that it takes. Like, I know more than anyone probably what you're going through. And it is, and it can be very, like, sort of thankless, like, really, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, I don't do it to get credit. I do it because I love it. Whenever I can see that you've, like, took a community together and the joy that it brings people. Like, I love Naha more than, like, you know, if I introduce you to someone, we, you both, you know me, I introduce you both, and I heard that next week you both went for dinner. I love that so much. Like, I don't <laughs> want anything from it, because that's, like, a friendship, a connection, whatever it is that you might need and want it for. Like, I just think it's so class. And I yeah. think that that's a lot of why I'm so just, like, spurred on to have these communities, starting with the sport. That, like, I mean, I played Komogi since I was eight or something. Um... So like I always, like I didn't really know any other life, right? That was my way to adapt when I would move to all these different cities. That was my way to adapt. So then whenever I came here and it wasn't here, I was like, I don't understand. What do you It doesn't like, feel good. It doesn't, <laughs> it, I, I just couldn't un- even understand how that was like possible that there was no Komogi in New York, like one of, you know, the epicenters for Irish people. Yeah. Find out anyway what had happened. Like it was here and it used to thrive like a long time ago, but you know, for people that don't know, it's quite a difficult sport. And so you know it, it's a high skill level and if people it's aren't awesome. committed you know and it gets hard so it's yeah. really hard so you really have to find a way to engage people so as those people of that generation grew up it fizzled out and i've seen it happen in many cities in america unfortunately like a team that i used to play for in boston is no more we won the north american several times chicago same thing so like it takes an absolute army to keep it going um, but yeah, so anyway, back to the original question, the recruitment, definitely a lot of pestering. Social media, yes. I'm trying to even remember how developed it was like 10 years ago. I mean, obviously it was developed, how good I was on it, I don't really remember. I'm sure we set up some sort of an Instagram page. I right. would have relied a lot on Facebook too, actually. I think now you do actually more Instagram than Facebook. Right. But at that time, it would have been a lot of Facebook having like Facebook events and training this here. Don't really do that stuff anymore. Right. Um, but it would have been a lot of that as well. But honestly, I... I um, really do think that the one-on-one just, pe- I say pestering, but I say that in a joking way. Like, you with know, love. Like, yeah, with love, exactly. To just be like, come on, come on, come on. And then they almost, they can't really say no. <laughs> right. Well, that's so. the thing. It's so like, I get ner- like, I don't want to impede upon not just somebody's privacy or whatever, but like mm-hmm. you said, like, 
you keep going because again, they've already expressed that they are interested. Yeah. And then, you know, you keep going. My problem too is sometimes like people do and I'll do the same thing. And then at some point they're like, they back up because I'm too far forward. You know what I mean? Like I'm a little too, too. And you notice because then people start to pull away. So it's almost like you kind of have to gauge that, but also that little like cat and mouse, like, okay, you'll back off for a little bit and then be like, yeah. by the way, don't forget. I have no, it here. You know. Definitely. And like, I mean, I'm sure your enthusiasm is infectious and that's probably like what attracts them so much. So, you know, once they learn those skills, but like we said, like it is so hard, like I yeah. get it, but yeah. Um, you know, people you're going to, of course there's people like, I'm not saying everybody asked ever has always come. Like that's not the way at all. Right. Like, and, and our people just be like, look at, I really don't have time. I have to do this. I work is crazy. I play another sport, blah, blah, blah. And that's when, you know, but a lot of the time people are like, oh, yeah, I would really like to try that. Or, or, you know, it's a social aspect. They want to make yeah. friends. And so it's that, that, but it's scary. You know, it's scary, like getting older and making friends. Um, so it's knowing that it's accessible and we're here for you if you want to have it, you know. And it's the same with that for women with ambition. Like so much of it is, the now obviously it's a bit different because it's recruiting and it's very much like a professional development thing. And yeah. at the end of the day, I tell these girls, like we moved to New York we're here, we left our friends and families, wherever it is. And again, so I should say, like Women with Ambition, it's niche because we are we branded as for Irish and Irish American women. We've had people mm-hmm. that are not Irish and Irish American and everyone is more than welcome, whoever wants to come to our programs. But you know, like there's many women's groups and they appeal to different people for different reasons. So it's again, it's about an accessibility thing. Like what does someone who like me moved out here, what would they be comfortable coming to what would they feel less intimidated because like and even though i'm head of a women's group there's other women's groups that i might feel like oh my god like i'm not qualified for this i'm intimidated you know so it's trying to create that arena where they feel comfortable so um you know so it's a bit different it's not as hard to recruit i would say but you know it's it's making sure that they feel confident and i say to them all the time like we're here living in new york so why are we not owning the fact that we want to do as well as we can and why are we not being ambitious and why is it like oh if she's super ambitious or talking about it she's like really aggressive or oh, well, if she doesn't talk up is she not competent like it's just such it's just such nonsense so I, yeah just having these conversations has just been really really great you know so recruiting for the women with ambition is definitely a little bit easier you know, compared to a sport, <laughs> yeah, I would say. Yeah. Well, I mean, though, I, maybe, maybe not, though. It, I, I mean, obviously, from your experience, you said that it is. But at the same time, even, like, women with ambition, it's like, well, I don't know if I have that. I don't know if I can yeah. do it. Like, even that can stop people. Like, or can I admit it? Should I be admitting that? Like, if I walk in there, you know, I'm like, they're, they're, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> should I, should I be like... talking? But it's true. It's like, yeah. should I be admitting? And like for ages, I didn't. You're just like, oh yeah, sure. You know, I'm tipping along. It's grand. Instead of being like, no, what do I actually really want? And why can I not talk about it? You know, like if someone walks in and is like, I want to be a CEO in 10 years, why should we not be like, that's unreal. Like good for yeah. you. You know what I mean? Because so, ambition is painted with such a negative energy. For women. It's like, uh, yeah. And like, it's kind of like ego, right? Like everything yeah. is like, oh, you know, take out the ego. It's like, I, I spoke with somebody else on, on the podcast too, Emily Kwok, who's a black belt and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And she's like, it's not taking the ego out. It's just managing it. It's like, you yeah. need that to have that like competitive edge and you need that Completely. to be able to, you know, come forth with what you got. It's okay to have that. But again, a surplus of it and kind of where it's not, uh, not, not needed, but not appropriate in that moment you know what i mean like it's no, good to have 100%. ambition but you don't yeah. want to come full force if it's like a moment that needs like 10 percent. you know no it's true because then it's just like an attitude problem but right like if a, if a if a man is like you know i'm so ambitious i want to get in this position or whatever you're like oh my god he's such a gunner like look yeah. at him go whereas if a girl does that it's like you said it's like oh my god who does your one thing she is and it's such an yeah. irish thing as well mm-hmm. but you know i've definitely seen it in america too it's just like women in general and like 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 your friend said you know ambition obviously an ego thing is totally different but like ambition is just that quality that like is like that fire in your belly right that yeah. like makes you be like what do I want and how am I going to get it? And like, I absolutely deserve to have that. Mm-hmm. So how do I put in steps and the more help and support you can get, like the better. And like, that's the thing, like, again, that I've realized, and it's funny, the contrast between, you know, the sport and this sort of other community where we're all, I cover own individual goals 
but we can make still make a collective community about it. Yep. With sport, you know, it is interesting because, and like you talked about the golf and stuff. So I started playing golf just like over COVID and I love it so much. Like mm -hmm. I can't even cope. And it's so different, right? Because it's a sport, but it's just me. It's just me yeah. and I'm not letting down my team if I play bad. If I play bad, I just, I'm like, oh God, that's so annoying. But I'm just annoyed with myself. If I play good, I'm like, okay, great. You know, so I think that it's just such an interesting, different dynamic. You don't have that same competitiveness. Like, you know, like how competitive we are with Liberty Gears. Like, we want to win, like, of course. So, you know, just that sort of, you know, sometimes it can be unhealthy almost. Mm, yeah. And so not to have that is like a real nice reprieve, you know. Yeah. And maybe it's just me getting older. I don't know. I don't know. But so that's interesting, you know, because like with the women ambition, it's not us being like our team versus their team. Oh, like we're, like, you know, whatever you know bait them off the you play with. Well, <laughs> but, but you know what I mean you don't have that it's really like everyone is in a room and you're like oh my god you do this you do this oh my god you you can go and do that well I can go and do this and we can celebrate together you know it's yeah. really cool it's really cool yeah. no it's awesome I mean, it's like again it's like managing everything right it's just kind of managing those yeah of course you want to win and of course it like is a letdown when you don't whether whether for yourself in golf or like it's good that that gives you that like moment of reprieve but yeah, because we like you're after something, after something, after something. It consumes you, and then you yeah. don't realize what's happening to other people around you. It's like yes, you can build each other up, but if you're not careful, I think this is where ambition also gets a negative aspect. It's like if you're not careful, then you'll start stepping on people along the way, rather than using each other to work with each Definitely. other and listening to each other. Yeah. So again, just like Jane said, having ambition is not a bad thing at all. It's a great thing for anybody, but just make sure that you are using your ambition wisely, you know, for yourself yeah. to get where you want to go. There's nothing wrong with going after your goals. Just don't be a dick. Like, yeah. Number one and rule. Like, you know? <laughs> but it's, it's also like, and I think, you know, again, maybe you don't really realize this until you sort of become more of a mid-level or senior, you know, or having just like a number of years of experience working at entry level. I get that it's harder because you don't really know where your options are. Everyone starts. It's like at the, at the start line of a race, you know, everyone's yeah. like, and you're like, Oh my God, they got to do this. Why don't I get to do that? Blah, blah, blah. So it's mm -hmm. like a lot more easy to compare. And I just wish people knew that you should not. And I know it's so hard between social media, between just literally not really having any other perspective, because as you grow then out of it, everybody's journey is different. Like, uh, like so, even if they seem so parallel, there's something in it that makes it so different. So being able to like talk about that and then support each other through it, you know, it just, it just, it's just so much more rewarding. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been pretty cool. It's just really interesting to see those different perspectives, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's what Jeet Kune Do is all about. So that's what I teach is Bruce Lee's art and concept. And it's literally like, I, I, I swear, I, I'm, I keep saying I'm going to do this, but I'm going to make a whole series, like a, a docu series or something. And I'm going to say Jeet Kune Do is everything. And we're going to talk about exactly what we're talking about here. Like, mm -hmm. you know, women with ambition is Jeet Kune Do. How? Because you guys all have like, not a very similar curriculum, but you're going to come at it from different angles. You're going to see it a different way. It's perspective, but also how you deliver it. You know, once yeah. you can take in that information, it's not saying you're going to do it right away, right? Like you can't just try something once and be like, it didn't work. You didn't give a chance to be able to actually be able to accomplish it once you've done that and you understand it and it may not work. Okay, then let's try and pivot. Let's try and see which ones work best for you. Mm -hmm. So that's what that's all about is making sure that you understand the concept of what you're working with and then make it your own. Yeah. So, yeah, it's no, really class. cool to see people grow through that and also get them to understand that at the beginning, especially white belt level, like for anything, right? Like white belt level is like. You're not expected to know anything. I don't care if you come from a black belt somewhere else. You are not expected to yeah. know anything higher than that level. If you bring it, awesome. But don't don't put that pressure necessarily yeah. on yourself because then you're not going to have any fun. And it's, mm -hmm. it is a really fun journey. And I am one to talk because I definitely will put a lot of that pressure. And pressure then what happens? I stop going or I yeah. stop doing things. And, and that's, that's like a lot of, I mean, funny, we just, for Women with Ambition, had... Um, my favorite topic, imposter syndrome. Oh, um, I was going to mention that too. Yeah. yeah. So it's like my favorite topic because I feel like I have every possible type, like, a, you know, in theory, I won't go into it, but there's like five types and oh, you can. different people, you know, there's, well, there's these five different types. If you read just like different books and things mm -hmm. and I'm like, yeah, I feel that. I feel that. I feel that. I like, it's not just like I have one type, <laughs> but you can check. feel it for different, <laughs> you can feel it for different, um, you know, situations and 
like what you're talking about is kind of a bit of imposter syndrome. Now, we actually had a talk. You remember, you know, Caitlin Harper, you played Camille yep. with her. So she yep. did the talk with us last week and she was talking, you know, about how there's actually different. She's an author, right? Yeah, she's an author as well. Caitlin Harper, go and read her books. Um, <laughs> she was she explaining. A talk? She did a yeah. talk. She's like an expert in imposter syndrome and like uh, communication change and companies and things and about how there's like imposter syndrome because the stakes are so high so you really feel like you're not good enough and you you're like I don't deserve to be here because I don't know this I have to read all these things and you're like but I still don't know it whereas you can also be just actually unskilled Mm -hmm. at something but so that's different from imposter syndrome so they can definitely overlap and feed into each other but I think where you start you know that it's imposter syndrome because you care about it you know what I mean Mm -hmm. so like even though you might be unskilled at something you have something that drove you there you want to get better but like you say, because you're like so afraid and frightened, like, well, I don't even deserve to be here. This is terrible. Like, you'll just drop out. So you sabotage yourself, you know? Yeah. And so we talk a lot about that at Women with Ambition. Like, how can we like overcome that? Like, get the hell out of your head because everybody's in the same boat. Everybody, but they just don't talk about it, you know? And all you need is that support network. Like a lot of the time, if men understood this more, they could be the allies that you need, you know? And mm-hmm. I feel very strongly about this, like the concept of allyship. And I actually really want to do a Women with Ambition event with maybe like some sort of other organization in New York where we can like get, you know, young and old men to the, into the room. I think it would be beneficial for older men because they'd be like, oh, I didn't even know this was a thing, you know? And again, they just haven't been educated in it. Younger men would be helpful for them because they're the next generation of leaders. So if yeah. they can make that like cultural change, but just the concept of allyship being, you know, if you can support us, just be, obs- it's like anything. It's like, Anything that you need to literally get educated in, like other religions. I know nothing about certain religions, so I don't understand them conceptually, what they care about and why, because I'm just not educated in it, you know? So, like, Mm -hmm. if they can get educated in, like, the things, how we feel and, you know, that we do, like, we, it just because we might not be as loud in meetings and stuff, it's not because we don't have confidence. That might actually be a personality thing. And the best way to get the skills out of those people and their thoughts and their opinions is to have more of a one-to-one smaller group. And that's where they might thrive and excel and the contribution in that they could make. You know, so I think that there's just so many things that they could learn about how to improve their culture and teams to get the best out of everybody, you know. And so that's something I really want to work on this year. Um you know, I think I would learn a lot again about yeah. why men cert- would think certain ways too. Yeah, of course, like learning back and forth because I think mm-hmm. that would create clearer lines of communication and understanding, which is just better yeah. overall. But it's just, I guess, the not the complication, but the challenging part of that is finding the people who feel strong enough within themselves yeah. to be willing to learn that and want to learn that and see the value of learning You're it rather than right. just like... I'm just going to go sit with a bunch of women like a baby. Yeah, roll in their like eyes. No, you're 100%. You're 100% right. It, that's like actually like such a like accurate observation, you know, and that's that's part of the battle, you know. But not everybody is like that, you know what I mean? Because I yeah. could think like that as a martial arts instructor, right? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you'll find the men that'll like I one of my private lessons is like definitely way taller than me. I've taught many men that like, you know, and they just they appreciate the lessons and they respect me and it's just like sometimes again that not imposter syndrome necessarily comes in, but like maybe after like where it's like, huh, I, I don't know. I sometimes, sometimes it happens like that, but other times I'm just like, yeah, I do teach you people. Like, yeah. I guess, but you sorry, probably, I'm rambling. No, but, but you no, but you probably feel like you have to prove yourself more. I'm like, why, why can you not just, if you were a man instructor, you wouldn't have to feel like, oh my God, I have to show how unreal I actually am. You know? Like, yeah. It's, it's yeah. You know what? It's not even that for me, for me, it's honestly like, I guess I just question like, huh? I'm, I guess I'm more surprised that they do, even though I'm not like, because I can definitely handle, <laughs> Yeah. not about handling myself, but it, like, I'm very, like, I've always like, I grew up playing, like I was the only girl on the sports teams. Like I always like was surrounded by boys. I have an older brother. So I think mm-hmm. I just am naturally comfortable with that. But in yeah. like my brain, sometimes I'm like, why do they train with me? Like, and I don't know. It's, uh, I know you're... why. But because you're still. a brilliant instructor, your your reputation has gotten around. Oh, That's why. Shoot. That's <laughs> why. <laughs> no, but it's it is incredible, and I'm so yeah. grateful for that. And again, that's just see, there's so many men out there that don't mind. They just want to learn martial arts, and yeah. like it doesn't matter who is teaching no, them as great. long as they are qualified to be able to do that. 
So that's the important thing is the qualifications, because if you have that, you have that knowledge, you're going to show it and it's going to come through and it's not going to come through as phony or fake. So as long Mm -hmm. as you put the work in time, the practice to knowing your craft, like you don't necessarily have to push that on people. Like you, what you have to push is like what Jane said is keeping up on their ass, you know, like, Hey, you said you want to do this. So yes, the upkeep is there, but trust in yourself, your knowledge. And if you feel uncomfortable with it, if you feel like, man, I don't necessarily remember that, then go research. You yeah. know, even I've, I've done that recently too. I'm just like, oh man, I feel like I should remember this more. It's just like, oh, like here's YouTube, but I know how to sift out what is and what maybe isn't best for me and what I've learned, you know, I'll see a certain move. I'm like, well, that, yeah, that's definitely part of it. This, 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 and that. So, yeah. um, you know, I've started doing that more recently, like, cause in my brain, I was just like, well, my instructor back home in New York, he's the one that had the curriculum. He's the one that taught me like everything. We just went off of, you know, what he was telling us and. Uh, you know, I did this instructor camp under Guru mm-hmm. Dan Asanto from the recommendation that my Sifu gave, um, mm-hmm. which is incredible. I'm so grateful. Like that's, that's what's allowed me to be able to do this here in Hawaii and like, you know, unintentionally make a school, but like it's, I wanted to do private lessons only. And then it's just like the community needed this or asked of this. It didn't yeah. necessarily need it, but it's what was asked. And that's, you know what? Well, you, is... you saw, you saw a gap and like a lot of it is sometimes things formulate these communities or these initiatives or these businesses of the people that you're talking to out of their own almost necessity. You know what I mean? Yeah. You want, you moved there, you knew you needed money. You knew you wanted to explore this passion. It was like sort of started from your necessity, but then yeah. your just desire to contribute to the whole community, you know? So, and like, that's how I started with Komogi. I was like, why is there no Komogi? Like, this doesn't even make sense. Okay. Well, there, sh- there should be Komogi. So there's going to be Komogi. And like, why, like with the woman with ambition thing, like how it even started, you know, I was thinking about a job change. I've been in my law firm for like seven years. And I really didn't know where to start. I was like, I actually don't. Because I was just head down, head down, yeah. work, 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 work. Didn't like do all the network and do all the things, which if anybody asks me now for career advice, the things I would tell them that I've learned in one year, like I can't even, I can't even tell you. But um, so I, that's how, that's how it was born. Like I was like, I need to talk to people who understand the stress and the anxiety and the worry that I'm going through, like for yeah. the desire to, how can I network? How can I do better? Like this imposter syndrome is crippling me. I like, how would I ever be able to get another job? Like these are literally things that run through my head. I know yeah. it seems so ridiculous, but like when you're just in, in your bubble, you know, and then you talk to other people and like, what, like, what were you talking about? Like do this, <laughs> do this. Or else they just be like, don't worry. It's fine. I think that stuff too. Even just knowing that you're not alone is, oh my God, it is literally, it's life changing. So yeah, that was how it started. Like my own almost necessity to talk and vent and take action, you know? And then I discovered that all these other girls wanted to do that as well. So then as I said, we literally met here like a year ago. And like that's, we did a six, so our like women with ambition, the program of it as such, it sort of has like grown, but how it started, what it was supposed to be (laughs) whenever it first started was literally going to be six months and we'd meet once a month. And we talk about something like a structured topic. So I would make these wee discussion guides. So like the first night we talked about self-promotion and personal brand. Okay. So that the next month we talked about imposter syndrome. And next thing then I was like, oh, we could have a speaker. So we got Caitlin in to talk to us. That like expert speakers coming in was never going to be a thing. Then next month, you know, we talked about network. And the next month we talked about mentorship. Anyway, whatever it was, we had six months of a program. So mm. then scattered in through that. You know, just from meeting different people and other people hearing about it, they were like, well, can I come and talk? Can I come and talk? And we were like, sure, these experts want to come and talk to us and teach us 100%. So we had like our peer program where we would come here and like, you know, have our tea and biscuits, but like talk, get to really know each other, get to know each other's goals, what we wanted to do, like what we worked at as a career. Like I've learned feel like about so many industries just from talking to these girls. Cause like, again, I'm just like in my little law bubble, learned all about their careers, what they want to do. And I just got so inspired by them. And like over 60% of that group, we had 15 in our group, like that number of them either changed their jobs asked for pay rises, got them, got promoted. Me too. Like I changed my job. You know what I mean? So yeah. like they took real action because they were like empowered and supported and celebrated then anything they would do, even if they would be like, I talked to like my boss today. We we're like, yeah, yeah. Like the things are <laughs> happening, you know, like it was it's like a sports simple. team. See, <laughs> honestly. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's, it just really, it really is like pretty cool. So then, yeah, it just developed from that. The next thing, we like started to spotlight senior people and like our great things that like women were doing here in New York. And it's just kind of evolved. And that's then we had like a big official launch 
in October time. So like six months in, we we're like, okay, this is actually going to be like a real thing. And we got, we graduated from this table. We now have a space at the Bank of Ireland. They wow. give us a space where we have our conference room where we can have bigger events now, which is like so cool because to have that space and to have their support is unbelievable. So yeah, we just have developed from there. We now have our second cohort, like so that peer mentoring, there's uh, 17 in that group. And so they meet once a month. They're now halfway through... And yeah, we've had different, we had Caitlin last week. We have loads of different speakers coming up. We have an International Women's Day event. So yeah, there's lots going on and it's all really exciting and kind of like mind blowing. There, but there's, but my, my thing is there's a desire for it. There's a community there. The amount of people that I've met and that inspire me so much, like from the most junior, like J1 person that's come out to the most senior person that I did not know a year ago, like collectively just to see all the unbelievable things that they're doing and to be able to highlight them and like that's a big part of it like right like I'm mid-level in my career I would say so I needed that support because again from all this research and all this reading that I was doing a lot of women in their mid-level that's where they start to doubt themselves and they yep. don't push for that leadership or maybe they want to go and have families and they're like well is that it for me no why is that for you you know you might have to delay things for a little while or whatever it is but that's where they kind of like would sort of dwindle whereas the like these men for a play to them were all like firing ahead but like why it doesn't make sense so that right. was my that was my own necessity but then like our programs younger people can come like um but also another big huge part of it for me whenever i needed like help and like how do i network i was like where are all the senior people where are all the senior irish and irish american people who i know have been living here for 20 years and have done unbelievable things like why are they not like they had no platform so right. we want to provide that platform where we can connect like i said to you earlier if i can connect one and two people and they go off for dinner i'm like the most happiest person ever if i can connect someone who's at my level who needs help and i can connect them to a senior person i've met like job done you know and they, you just don't know where that relationship's going to go how they're going to introduce to each people and then everyone like has success you know so it's been really cool to be able to collect sort of all the different echelons <laughs> um <laughs> you know what i mean so mm -hmm. that's like a big a big like part of the mission of women ambition is just really connecting everybody having that platform that support but really where we can highlight people for all the unbelievable things they have done because they, they have done some really class things you know and it's funny because a lot of the older people they don't use like the more senior people they don't use social media the way we do. They're very right. heavy, very, very heavy use on LinkedIn. And so that's what I would advise people like get on LinkedIn. I honestly didn't use LinkedIn until yeah. like a year and a half ago. And now I'm obsessed. I love it so much. It's still actively used. Like, Oh my God, it's class. Whereas younger people use social media, but that's like all our age group. Like you're, it's, it's not really that appropriate for professional purposes. That's what I've learned in the last year. Maybe not everyone agrees and that's totally fine. Cause again, probably industry dependent, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But I like the way to connect with the more senior people. And once you do connect with them, like I can't even tell you how willing they are to oh, yeah. connect they want to teach they want to talk about their career paths so the more that like women ambition can provide that platform um you know that's what it's about did so. you make one specifically for like women with ambition is that what it's called on linkedin i had created one when i was i think in college when it was like first like the thing this is what you should create and then i did and you know had it throughout but it didn't yeah. really make sense but you know and also like it was probably just the stage that you were at as well yep. like i don't even know if it is that much used for college and stuff like i i can't even remember when i set up linkedin but all i can tell you is i didn't use it for seven years literally yeah. the whole time i was at the law firm i was like i, I don't need so i'm not looking for right. another job and then i i had not used it and now as i say i'm like an avid user but so i think it probably depends it depends on like where you are and like the necessity of it but it's definitely a brilliant tool for like the networking aspect right. and another thing that i would advise for people and i've said this at panels that i've spoken at <laughs> like don't just connect with someone don't just connect and be like oh they're gonna add me like i get that all the time if you write a note under it and say hi jane i saw you at this event yeah. or hi i i heard you on colo's podcast i will absolutely be like yep if you want to go for coffee, if you want to have a call, all the rest. But there is no, it's like cold calling people, you know? Yep. So I've tried to advise that because that's just, if you do want to grow your network, it has to be intentional and deliberate. And you do want to find like a common purpose, you know? So, um, so yeah, it depends. But network, or LinkedIn has been very, very powerful. Instagram, like, so we do have a woman with ambition LinkedIn to answer your question. So please follow. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> but we we also have like Instagram and all, and like Instagram is obviously where you upload all the stories. Like it's constant story, 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 yeah. and. Then, you know, it's hard. It just feels like it's something you have to do. And, like, it's all pretty and things are so pretty and it's all lovely. How effective is, I don't know. Like, honestly, I think it probably is. Like, people definitely see that we're having events and things on it. Yeah. But it definitely requires constant maintenance. And, like, if you're not doing that, like, I go through ebbs and flows, you know. But, like, because it's not what I, that's not really what I enjoy, like, no, to be honest, me, you know. No, me either for the long time, So it's time, hard. Yeah. yeah, it's hard. I will say using, uh, do you use TikTok as well? I actually don't. I don't have it. I'm just like, I can't be on another thing. Maybe I should. So we have a, like a women ambition board now. Probably is something we should talk about if any of those want to get on it. Um, but again, I feel like that would be brilliant for you because you can really show your like physical moves and stuff. Like it's not like I'm going to like be on TikTok and be like talking. Maybe I should in the future. I don't know. But like talking about it, imposter syndrome and self-promotion stuff, I'm just not there yet. Yeah. You know? it's, well, but, a lot of that stuff is on there too. And I'll yeah. tell you, it's made my life a lot easier than I didn't realize because I was not on it. I was like, I thought the same thing. I was like, yeah. absolutely not. I don't want to learn this. This is making, it's so annoying even just to get on it. <laughs> now I have one for Hawaii hurling, for Colo Task Music for myself and wow. for Tasco Fit. Uh, no and on TikTok, it's Tasco Fit Hawaii just because I'd had, I had created two accounts and then I couldn't use the same one, whatever. So, right. but it makes it a lot easier. You get probably, I think, better music choices on there. Mm -hmm. makes it easier to be able to edit and not only that, oh. you can use it to attach to your Instagrams. So okay. you don't have to post in three different places. And if you have yeah. your Instagram linked to your Facebook, then it's just pop up automatically. So you don't really even use Instagram directly now. You really use TikTok as your first platform, your go-to. A little bit of both. So if I do a story or something like today, I, I did just a quick story. Because I also, I was, a, I am, I was, I am a perfectionist uh, mm -hmm. working on that, you know, making that a little bit less so i guess just so i can get things out there but it's not bad quality things right it's just i'm not sitting there having to hashtag like 10 million things on one post sometimes people just want to see what the hell you're doing yeah so like yeah. today i just did a little story tagged a person hashtag mm -hmm. like maybe two things then did one more clip of me on there and my friend uh my friend and my student who came this morning got mm -hmm. a little clip of me posted it so people just kind of want to see a little yeah. what you're doing and then you can make your main posts i'm still trying to figure out like sometimes when to make something a story versus a main one yeah and then, um that's a a bit of a hard lesson which is annoying it's like well you can do this because this is not gonna last and you want it to but i'm like don't i want people to see this continuously it's like not I always know. like it's momentary harsh. like events and things like but then you can make a specific scenario like okay this is what i want to be on there to show people like okay this is where we have our talks and everything yeah. so if you explore it a little bit too like it'll start to Mm -hmm. send to you like what's relevant to you yeah and sometimes it is people just talking like it is like that so it's it's really quite um it can be opening and just it's mm -hmm. so much easier to edit like yeah but anyway so that's i i would definitely advise that but who knows mm -hmm. what the next thing is by that time but at least Honestly. they're linking so yeah, that you don't great. have yeah. to like yeah because that was driving me nuts i know yeah it's time. It's just the time consuming it's still time consuming so let's talk about that though you are an impeccable organizer how <laughs> how how have you gotten that way like how have you been able to manage that obviously you being able to manage all of these things because you're still with the the Komogi team mm -hmm. um which again i'm going to talk about that stuff soon the whole hurling and then my my yeah, vision for please. hurling in general which mm -hmm. ahead, but we'll talk about that so um <laughs> But yes, so how have you always been this organized? Did you learn through college through having like for being a lawyer? Obviously, like you've had to be very organized. But yeah, like, you know, tell us. Um, I feel like I would like to be able to articulate it maybe better than I'm probably going to be able to. But, <laughs> you know, I remember whenever I was at school, uh, like, our, so I have a twin sister. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And uh, my Armand, uh, like let us do everything like i mean like all sports we did everything like we just yeah. did everything now she enjoyed some more than me and i enjoyed others more than her like whatever we like from we when we were we we um we used to do irish dancing and swimming mm -hmm. this before we even played camogie and i hated the swimming and she hated the dancing but we <laughs> still did both you know so yeah. then we started camogie we started football next thing you're into secondary school and in secondary school you have like everything like and and it's not like university that was a bit of a shock when i went to university and i was like but that clashes all the time they're not working with each other what was yeah so in like school we used to like do all the sports all the shows just like everything but then i was also like had to do all my homework elizabeth would have been less 
cared less about the books yeah. <laughs> than what I did, you know. But um, so I think that honestly, it's from back then, like just this drive to like do everything, experience everything, like not have any regrets, which yeah. again, and like can even still now be sort of overwhelming. You know, it can be like, there's no point in saying and you can get burnt out from it or just, just get overwhelmed. You know, I don't mm-hmm. think I get anxiety as such, but I definitely get that whoosh when it Oh my God, like, how is this like possible? But it has honestly been like something that we've just, I've just always been so used to. And then I remember in my last year of school, like, so the year, you know, before you're going to university, you're doing your A-levels. And I remember a teacher saying to me, like, and she was like looking out for me. She's like my favorite teacher. Yeah. And we, we had like a school show coming up. We were playing all the sports. Of course, I like wanted to get all A's, whatever it was. And she was like, Jane, you know, like, you can't do it all. And I was like, I will do it all. I just remember. <laughs> I just remember I've been like, I will. I don't, and like, which was really unusual because I'd be like, yes, miss, no miss. Like, you know, but I was like, I will do it all. And then yeah, I just, because she like, challenged insisted. your, uh... yeah, but like, maybe she did it because she knew that it would like drive me. But I just remember that like really vividly. And I often think about that whenever I am like feeling overwhelmed. Um, but then, yeah, if then even when I went to university, I definitely tried like so many different things. Again, like a lot of stuff clashed in a different way. But I think that I've just always wanted to like always be trying different things, always go in different places. So somehow you've just always, a lot of it is prioritization. You know, yeah. like you just, you just have to, and some things then will wait. Um, I still, like you just mentioned a few minutes ago, like, I do have a problem with being a perfectionist to the mm. point where like then things are like never good enough, especially in work. I really struggle with it in work and like it definitely can be to your detriment sometimes because it just doesn't need to be or you could get things done faster but you know whatever but yeah just like and again another thing like when I came out to New York like culturally it was like a bit of a big shock and so of course then whenever I really wanted to like really like I would work and work was work and work was great bit very busy but like to extract myself out of that world because otherwise I literally just could have been there 24 7 and I could have and there would and there would have been work to do like they would have found out I would have found out there would have been work to extract myself out of that I like it was GA it was camogie and football you know yeah. and so then obviously I spent a lot of time building up the camogie club and like it is you're just sitting on your laptop at 10 11 o'clock at night and like that's just the way it is whereas other people might be watching tv and that's totally fine but like I got like joy and wanted to do that but so you are so what I would say is like you're sacrificing other things like I literally don't watch tv and if mm-hmm. I watch tv it's with like guinea my husband um and it's an event I have to make it an event so I feel like I'm not wasting time and that's just yeah. the way I am you know and I that's just the way it is. So, like, you're sacrificing other stuff. You're sitting on the laptop pretty much nearly every night, all weekend, whatever it might be. And, like, that's just the way it is. So, um, it just depends what you want. You know, it just depends what you want. So, yeah, I suppose to your question, like, it's just kind of always been something that I've done, done a lot of things, juggle a lot of things. But, like, that's where I get a lot of drive out of, you know, and, like, meeting all the different people and getting all the different experiences and so I do definitely enjoy it, but I'm not going to say it's all like fun and games all the time. Like there's been times like, you know, with even with the camogie over the years where you're like, especially when it gets to North Americans. So like for listeners, like the North Americans, it's like the big competition that we would train for, like, you know, from April, May, right through the summer. And we would go in August and it's been amazing. Like we traveled to Chicago. We went to, where else? We went to Seattle, um, San Fran, Virginia. Philly. Philly, Boston, all the places, like it's class, but you have to raise a lot of money, like a lot mm-hmm. of money. And, you know, being the chairperson of the club, you do like definitely take on like this obligation that if it's not achieved, it's like your fault, <laughs> you yeah. know? And like, we always achieve it. Like we always do. Everyone always gets stuck in and does it, but like, it's like so much pressure and it can be really hard. I'm really overwhelmed. And I'm always like begging people, like, please, will you sponsor us? Please, when you buy a ticket, please. And you feel like you're always going back to the same people. And luckily, like, this community, like, it's so supportive. But like, yeah. it's not all fun and games. It's not all like, oh, my God, like, we're all just, like, having the best time ever. Like, sometimes you're like, I just wish I didn't have to fundraise. Just so much easier if we didn't have to do this because it's right. just so hard, you know. But then you do it, and it's all amazing. So you do it yeah. again. So you do it again, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. That's awesome. So what have been some of the... We kind of talked about it a lot throughout this too, but what have been some of your personal, like, what have been like the harder moments where you're like, do I even want to continue doing this? Or like, I mean, maybe there was never a moment because you're always like, I know I want to achieve this, but it's like, where have the moments come to where you're just like, what the fuck? Like, how, how can I get through this? How can I get past this? But yeah. you even said it's kind of like that middle zone. Like you start out strong, like, yeah. and then it's like, you know, it's like a run or a sprint. It's yeah. like you start out real good. And then once you keep going, you have to keep that pace. You're like, fuck. <laughs> I know. No, it's true. And like, again, you know, 
like I suppose at times whenever if people aren't coming to training and mm-hmm. you're like why why you know yeah and like people have lies of course they do like I even have missed training like yeah. oh my god so many times but like you know sometimes it's just like that you're like those are the hard times um or like again the fundraising stuff like I can't even tell people like how hard it is like it is so hard and like you know, a lot of times people don't get involved in the running of these clubs, and so they shouldn't. They We want yeah. them to come. We want them to come and play and enjoy, make their mates, have the crack, like not even get involved. Right. But it's just hard because sometimes people don't realize like how much is going on behind the scenes. And the reason a lot of the time you don't tell them is because you want to shield them from it. You want to shield them from the politics and the, the functioning of it because they're here to have a good time, and that's what you want for them. But like whenever, I suppose... You just feel like sometimes you're getting criticized whenever all you're doing is trying your hardest. You know, you're being yeah. criticized because, like, I don't know, like, I don't even know. Like, the gear wasn't ordered, like, a month earlier than people might have liked their gear. But, like, you know, it takes a lot of time to get the gear. And it takes work on it. It has to be sent from Dublin. It takes time to z- design. And then I have to sort it out into bundles. And you know what I mean? Like, right. And you are also things. one person. Yeah, I'm no, and then you, I get help from the board and everything. Yeah, of course, of course. But I think, like, you know, we, we, you know, like, we have a big club. There's, like, 60 or 70 people. So I suppose it's just we things like that. But it's never enough of a deterrent at all. Like, it's amazing. And, you know, people, like, always usually really know. But I suppose if I really had to pinpoint, it's just sometimes things like that get hard. Mostly it's, like, the fundraising thing is definitely yeah, for the Camogie. most difficult. So- Anything with uh, women's ambition yet, or it's just been kind um, of smooth sailing not, right now? Nothing yet, luckily. Okay. It's probably still early days. I mean, again, I feel like it'll it'll come a time, you know, whenever we will be wanting to fundraise because, like, ultimately for women's ambition. So right now, you know, it's this peer mentorship program. Then we have other speakers come in. We want to spotlight people. But, like, what we would love to do is to have, like, conferences, to have weekend, yeah. professional weekend summits, like, go away for the weekend and, like, have, like, workshops and trainings. And, like, that's all going to take money, you know, and... So, yeah, it's just building up, like, a legitimacy, sponsorship, um, and, like, finding ways. Like, we charge for events and things. Like, we don't have a membership model yet. If anyone has ideas for a membership model, would love to hear them. Because, for me, I don't want to have a membership model yet. And we've talked about this with our board because we want to make sure that everyone feels like they're getting value, you know? Right. So, um, whenever you're kind of still sporadically sort of organizing things, because so many things are happening so fast and so new, I want to make sure that people feel like they're getting value. If they sign up for a year, what are they signing up for, you know? So that's kind of why we we just are kind of charging by event for now, which is fine, Mm -hmm. which is fine. So we'll see. We'll see what will happen. Um, But yeah, like like with anything, you know, like especially, for instance, well, well, one thing with the Women with Ambition, you know, which I kind of already touched on, like the social media thing, like it drains so much time and Mm -hmm. I don't particularly enjoy it, but I have to do it. And so... Sometimes I'm just like, I would just love to be sitting watching TV. I'd be love to be sitting <laughs> reading a book and I'm sitting here doing this Instagram post, which are many people even seeing it. Like, that's the really hard part of yes. it because, like, it's so contingent on, like, when is it posted? And I don't understand enough about social media and algorithms yeah. and how it all even works. Like, when's the best time to schedule and da 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 Right. Like, I don't sponsor posts. I don't do any of that stuff. So to know if it's even getting the traction that you would love it to get is so hard to, to know, but you, you have to do it. You have to like have a presence, right? So right. it's another education in itself to learn that oh, stuff. And honest to God. Sometimes it's on like just taking a moment to look up a little bit of it. Doesn't mean you have to know the whole thing, but it's like, yeah. okay, what's the best time to post or whatever. I don't even, I have to look that up too. But like, I remember trying to look up like the TikTok stuff, like even Gary V says like, you should be posting seven times a day. And we're like, what the fuck? Like, it's but, not realistic, and, but what, yeah. well, it isn't, it isn't, right? Because in the way that what he's talking about, he's like, you don't need a whole minute clip. You don't need to edit this thing mm-hmm. to death. Like, little clip of what you're doing, send it. Like, 15 yeah. seconds, whatever. It's like, here we are. Like, this is what we're doing. Send it. Next yeah. one. Boom. Just throughout yeah. the day. And it's like, it doesn't have to be much. It's just little snippets. Because not everybody want, either wants to sit there, too. Like, they just kind of want to see what's going on. And then they scroll or whatever else. So that's when those things become slightly more realistic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like, okay, p- perfect. Good. It doesn't have to be perfect. Excellent. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 No. So no, it's that's, just... that's, that's a really good point, honestly. And probably something that I should really think about because it is that perfectionist, right? Where yeah. it's like, doesn't have to be perfect. No one's, you're the only one that knows that it's not perfect. Whatever the hell perfect means. You're the only right. one that knows that, you know? So 
Well, yeah. you have to decide on what that is, right? Like those little snippets don't have to be quote unquote perfect. People just want to see like kind of what's happening. Mm -hmm. So, and then, yeah, obviously people make really cool videos that go viral or don't, but like people aren't necessarily going to see it, but the more that you do post, the more that they're going to show it to people. Yeah. And then again, you know, you'll get criticized even on there too. Like, I think I had one, per one person so far, but when that happened, I was like, Oh, I guess my, my videos are getting out there. If people yeah, are starting like, to write yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. So. Criticism is a good thing, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, <laughs> yeah. bring it on buddy. But it's yeah. learning how to also react or not react. Oh, to that. I know, Some of them I'm like, I know. Cause some people leave it on there and I'm like, okay. Cause usually I would just delete it if it's like negative or whatever. And especially mm -hmm. like if I'm posting anything with the kids, I make sure nobody can necessarily comment on it. Cause the kids are on TikTok, you know? So, yeah, um, yeah. so that's a different story. But, um, the thing I want to ask you just like, before we kind of wind this down is like, out of all we talked about and like all the rewarding parts of owning a business and whether it's a nonprofit or just again, like, you know, martial arts or whatever your business is. You know, what, what do you want people out there to take away from our conversation today or something that you'd like them to glean just in general about what can help them? Yeah. I mean, it's really, it's really like anybody can do anything, you know, and we honestly hold our back ourselves back so much. And I think that I've just realized that if you really like want to do something, you should just go for it. Like, I like we just talked about, someone's always going to criticize you. You're going to criticize yourself. You're like almost like your own worst enemy, but like, and there's so many opportunities like people really can do anything that they want and and that was a big draw for me to live in new york i had done different internships in america and i like just think that there's this tangible it's like it feels tangible for me it's intangible in reality like feeling that you can literally do anything in new york mm -hmm. and so i think that luckily in new york we have all these opportunities all these people live here that might be harder in rural places whatever but like luckily with all the technology and things so many things are possible so like honestly it really is just you know put your mind when you put your mind to something you really can do it you know whatever it is you want out of it like like i said like this started here like with a few cups of tea and the way that it like oh, that's another thing to remember i suppose is that things will never be what you probably imagined them and most of the time it becomes better and bigger as long as you like want it and push for it enough you know so try not to have regrets like I know mm -hmm. that's such a cliche thing but like it's so true you know um and like the worst even if something somebody says no to you or you know it doesn't work out like that's a learning you do it better the next time so it's like no is never really a no it's just like a learning you know mm -hmm. whereas if it's a yes sure it's a win so either way yep. you win, either way you win, because you either learn something or you win whatever the goal was that you set. And I also, another thing, like set baby steps. Like if I had been like, win with the mission, it's going to be like this massive network. And like that just, I couldn't even have imagined it right, first of all, but like, would that have even been realistic? Because you almost have to do the little steps and that's how you do it safely, like properly, securely, like, you know, you nurture the relationships. And like for anyone that's like starting a business, like going back to like what I said about the pestering element of it, like, I use that word like jokingly because a yeah. lot of it is relationship building and the nurturing that it involves. And I'm much better. Like I said, I go, I'm this big networker, like not at all. Like I walk into a room and there's like, you know, 500 people. I will like turn and walk around again. I like cannot deal with that. <laughs> like I just can't. And like I talked yeah. on a panel about this once. I think that it's really important to find your like networking style. And mine very much is one-on-ones, smaller groups and like really getting to know them that way and then just like that following up email and text and seeing how they're getting on coffee mad for the coffee you know so um yeah so to answer your question just like go for it whatever the hell it is you want because it probably won't look how you imagined it'll probably be better and all along the way whatever happens that you're like oh like that's that's sad i didn't get that you're gonna have learned something to do it to so just turn like get right back up and do it another way you know what i mean so um, like I'm trying to even think with the women with ambition stuff because it's more recent. Like, have things happened where people like things have said no? Probably. Like, I just can't really think right now. But you know, <laughs> it's not even in my mind anymore. No, it's just because yeah, <laughs> I'm like whatever. Like you know, and mm -hmm. and like with Komogi, like even over the years, people didn't sponsor us. We didn't win. Like, um, you know, people didn't come back or like whatever. You know, like you're always gonna have those little obstacles, but like you know, you will ultimately thrive. So I just really think that anybody can do anything. And yeah, there's so much potential for everybody. And again, it's about supporting each other. I think you just have to remember that you're on your own journey. So you might as well be supportive and happy for other people and they will do it in return because this competitive nonsense, like I can't be dealing. And like, 
like women especially, but it's almost like we're told that we should be like that. Like we're told mm-hmm. that, you know, oh, what's she doing? Uh, you, because if she's going for something, then you're like rolling your eyes at her. Yeah. And then if she doesn't, you're like, oh God, like does she have no like leadership skills or is she no inspiration? Right. Like what, you know, so just, we just need to support each other because like we will literally enrich each other so much and everybody's journey is so different. But the support, there's nothing like having a group of women to support you. Like it's just the most amazing thing. I watched a video recently. Um, I should send it to you. Sure. And it was Jane Fonda and her like all like we famous actor friends. And mm-hmm. it just struck a chord with me so bad. She was like, women are deliberate when they when they have friends. They turn around to the woman and are like, I want to be your friend. We are friends and I'm going to be your friend and I will pursue you. Whereas boys are like, oh, yeah, you know, Super Bowl tomorrow, whatever. Like, And they're friends, but it's such a different dynamic. But I just thought it was so accurate and so true. So, like, why don't we just talk about it? Like, be like, mm-hmm. Colo, me and you are friends. I might not see you for, like, months on end, but you're here, you're there, and I know if I need you, and you know if you need me, like, we're here. You know what I mean? And to just, like, openly say it, yep. oh, I just think it is class. Like, I just, we need to go around saying that we're deliberate friends, you know? And yeah. then it just enriches, like, our lives so much, and that gives you that empowerment and passion to just, like, drive forward with your ambition, so... <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And thank you for sharing that too. And also know guys, like it's okay if someone doesn't want to be your friend, that's going to be the hard part <laughs> to true. accept. We're friends for sure. Yeah. But like, um, cause yeah. like if somebody like we're, you and I are both like have that good energy, we're like, yeah, come on. And they're like, no. Yeah, that's okay. Well, why? That's totally fine. That's totally fine. No, you turn, you're going to be my friend then. Yeah, no, I know. No, you absolutely cannot be friends with everyone. And people are so different. Like, it's that's yeah. it's totally fine. But, yeah, it's just, like, support the people that it's around you um, because, yeah, everyone is just on their own path. So if you are right. going to be friends, might as well be happy and support each other, you know. Right. And even, yeah. but like I'm saying, too, even those that, like, aren't necessarily aligned with exactly what you're aligned with, like, that's okay, too. It doesn't mean yeah. you have to necessarily, like, shit on each other <laughs> like no, 100%. it's just you know it's like okay they don't yeah. they don't have to like what you like they don't have to want what you want i find that all yeah. in my family too i'm like can you guys just be okay with what i want to have for dinner yeah. even if it's the same thing over and over again like why is that a problem for you yeah, <laughs> like, i know it doesn't have to be like just mm-hmm. honor each other's like not only requests but like be honest with each other that's fine but also remember that honesty and opinions are also very closely related it's like you could be honest but it could also be just your opinion you know it doesn't necessarily make things fact so yeah just yes be as supportive as you possibly can be to each other and that's how your businesses are going to grow that's how you are going to grow as a person and you know if you need that time by yourself too that's also okay like yeah know that your community is there like jane you have this community now as well you're part of the warrior women in the world of entrepreneurship Mm -hmm. i mean you have been already but especially like via this podcast go and listen to some of the other women that we've had on here for you like and what you're doing i would recommend listening to uh, Christina A. Bischoff and Madeline Shane because they worked on a fantasy book series together. I interviewed the author too, but they worked on like a soundtrack and like a book artwork book, but they have to do a lot of that fundraising. They have membership tiers. So kind of what you're oh, talking about. And then they do yeah. it through like Patreon. So I don't know if like okay. you use that, but they're, they talk about that a little bit and they're going to use that because we're planning this like thing called rider con now so amazing it's That's and i'm class. even a part of that so i'm super stoked but again just you. going back to that tears but um yeah no then, definitely uh jane just where can everybody find you so whether it be for the uh the komogi or women with ambition um yeah and, yeah go ahead so for the komogi i'm like i mean for all of them we have instagram facebook um so for the komogi it's at liberty gales correct me if i'm wrong <laughs> it's at liberty I gales <laughs> And then there's just like Liberty Gales Komogi Club on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And then my own, if people want to like contact me, is Jean Mariad. Um, and then I'm on, on LinkedIn as well. Again, write a message, add a note so that I know <laughs> who you are. Um, but yeah, I'm Jean McCoy at that. And then for Women with Ambition, we also have a Women with Ambition LinkedIn. Women with Ambition NY, I think, is the Instagram but yeah, definitely. Um, we'd I'm going to put happy. that in the in the description as well. Yeah, so for anybody, and it, and it will be a live link yeah. so that you can you can. Click and on if it. there's anyone that will be interested in coming to speak, you know, on like topics that impact women, like these networking topics or authenticity or how do we, you know, confidence or just just talking about the different issues. Um, like we're always interested in hearing guest speakers. They don't have to be Irish or Irish American. So you know, if they have a skill, and then we can help promote them. The whole point is we are sharing their expertise 
for everybody else and you never know what might come from that so definitely let me know <laughs> awesome jane well so much more to talk about so hopefully we'll get another chance what to about talk. hawaii hurling <laughs> how hawaii is it hurling. going how is it's it going going well i've had an egg like another person added they just Brilliant. went by the field and i was just out there waiting for some it was so it was the weirdest thing because i was waiting for someone else and i kept thinking that the people were coming up to me uh, were the person I was supposed to meet because they were just visiting. So they wanted to come puck around. Um, and it ended up just being this other guy and his name was very close to the other guy I was supposed to meet. Right. So there's just this weird moment. And I was like, are you, are you the guy I was supposed to meet? And I was like, no, no, but I'm, you know, this name versus this meeting. I was like, Brilliant. Oh, and then the other guy showed up and it was the one day that my other teammates couldn't come because they are in the military. So it's a lot of like, you don't know when they're going to show up sure, when they're the not. Schedule. And they can't even always answer because they're yeah. on a mission or whatever. Uh huh. But yeah, I mean the basic thing apart. Oh, actually. Uh, and the nicest thing happened too. uh, the Augusta team from Georgia, they yeah. have been seeing like what we've been doing and everything. And they, and I've been in talks with like David from play hurling and everything. Mm -hmm. And they sent us a wonderful gift, custom made slitters, 12 wow. custom made slitters with our logo on it with the play hurling. That's class. So, that is I, like, so had nice. It here, but, um, yeah, so that they sent amazing. that. Oh, I, that's class. That's not cheap, you know? So like no, slitters are not cheap in Hawaii too is like, Definitely you know. not. That's a really nice, um, like token. I love that. That See? And support, yeah. supporting mm -hmm. you. That's amazing. No, well, it looks to me like it's going amazing. So good for you. Like I, it's obviously a harder target market, I would mm -hmm. say. Um, so just, yeah, just keep at it. Like your Instagram and everything is absolutely flying. Like it's, oh. it's very entertaining, um, <laughs> which, you know, is very important, but it's like growing like crazy, you know, yeah. so it's brilliant. It's brilliant. So keep it up. And, um, yeah, hopefully, you know, you never know. We could have a sevens tournament there yet. You never know. I hope so. I mean, my, my bigger goal is something that maybe not everybody will agree with. And I know you and I have mentioned it. It's just like for growing a sport, especially in a different country than the one mm. it's originated in. Like, I think the fact that we have two names for the sport is not a problem, but it's not helping anything either. Like, I think we should just call it hurling all around. Like, Komogi, I've grown to know. But, like, I was talking to David, too, from play hurling and you know obviously mm. he's he's doing his thing he's he's aligned you know with the GAA but like it's still annoying that there's two different names and the origin of it he was saying was like common which is the stick that we use the hurley and then og is just smaller like and it was called that because it was just a smaller stick the women used to use right. and it's just like the biggest dude on our team uses the smallest hurley right. and i use the <laughs> largest you know so it doesn't even make sense anymore yeah. it's not to like it's not to like shit on anybody who still calls it camogie or whatever but it's just like to have to explain to people the difference yeah. between it and also explain to them that there's really not a difference. It's just men versus women. It's just right. like, then why don't you just yeah. call it hurling? So yeah. I'm kind of on that quest to just keep that I simplicity. think that made sense for you to to call it hurling. I think that was a good choice. Yeah. Um, because like you, it, you know, you are building, so it's more of a co-ed situation. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I think that that is a good, that was, that was smart. But yeah. yeah. And even when just, it's not, I'm thinking I'm going to still even just go for like women's yeah. hurling and it might even be a different league in the end because again, like the GA does what it does and I, I'm not under them right now again. And yeah. I know that they, uh, can provide grants and stuff and people have said that, but I also want to see what we can do just like as Americans with the sport, not to absolutely. dishonor it or disrespect anybody. Like, absolutely not. I love Ireland. I would love to live there one day. <laughs> um, but it's just, you know, it's just like, well, why don't we have something here that can support mm -hmm. that sport yeah. and grow it in that manner and also maybe universalize the rules a little bit so that we can make it easier to play and like also just not so much bureaucratic bs like mm. if there's a problem with paperwork or whatever let's have a venue or something for people to be able to still play okay let's play some pickup games maybe you can't participate in this but let's have whatever let's just go play because we all we want to do is play is play hurling <laughs> like, oh i know i know so i know i know you know so that's that's yeah. just my quest and no in, i love it that's a brilliant that's a brilliant goal keep it up keep it up yeah, yeah and just keep getting those bodies is not the main thing uh, that is it's just that's mm -hmm. it like i just want to keep it simple and like even like yeah. backyard style and uh you know even i think over in la they've created a team now mm -hmm. so and i'm just gonna try and pop around to each team and just yeah. play and no yeah. disrespect to anybody no disrespect to gaa but i want to be able to just play with whoever the fuck i want so <laughs> i love it um, well the people in hawaii <laughs> have a great teacher so well they, thank you very much you, you will get there don't worry you will get there well yeah. i appreciate it and jane thank you so much for your <laughs> time today thank you. I, I can't wait to see how like everything progresses, <laughs> the team, but also like women with ambitions. So guys, check her out, check everything out. 
try to play some hurling and camogie. Uh, <laughs> if you're in New York, New Jersey, or if you're in Hawaii, come see me. And I hope you guys have a great day and aloha. A big mahalo to all you listeners out there for tuning into another episode of Warrior Women in the World of Entrepreneurship podcast. I'm so grateful that we've got another round of incredible warrior women for this season two. And thank you so, so much for listening into season one. If you have not already, please do so. You can find it on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, basically any audio listening platform, and also YouTube because I have been posting them on there. So guys, keep tuning in and please let us know what you think. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and just also download them off of those audio platforms. It helps us so much and just keeping up the positivity. If you have anybody that you know who you would love to hear on this podcast, please send them our way and we'll get them on. Have a great day, everyone, and stay tuned for the next episode.